Hi, I'm Danielle with Stitching Designs. Today's tutorial, we're going to be going over the repositioning of the bat wings for, I guess, you could put them on really anything, but I'm, I'm doing them on the on a jacket. I just think it'd be really fun to have wings on the back of a jacket. And then I'm going to be doing some other things to this jacket as well. So then I'll be able to show it off once it's all done. But so I've already stitched out one side and then we're going to continue on. We're going to I'm going to show you how to be able to reposition it to be able to do the other side. I know this will be upside down for you guys watching it, but so this is what the one side of the wing will look like and I did do a basting stitch onto it so I'll have to pull that basting stitch out. And now that I see it, so I did it into in my multi-needle machine, this is an 8x12 hoop. Technically yes, I could have done the 8x12 wing, probably should have now that I see it in, in here. but. I think it still is going to look awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the pins out. And then go around and then remove your basting stitches. I'm not snipping every one. I'm just definitely skipping it. quite a few. And then if you're not, if you can't quite get it, tweezers or using your fingers will help lift it up because you definitely do not want to accidentally cut your jacket or what you're working on. And then I'm using black cutaway. Uh, it doesn't show as much on the inside of the jacket. You could also use no no show mesh for this as well, or you can still use the white cutaway. But with all this amount of stitching that goes into it, I recommend using a cutaway versus a versus a tearaway. There we go. Okay. So now our jacket is loose, and go ahead and move it out of the way so I can get the hoop out or get it out of the hoop. You do not want to remove the stabilizer off the back of the jacket because on the design itself I do I did add little placement lines for it so that way when you do rehoop that's what you're going to be lining up so you need to keep the stabilizer on your original one Oops, wrong way and make sure you pause after, so we'll put the placement stitches onto this stabilizer. Then we'll line up the lines and then kind of make sure to situate the jacket. And then we'll put it back in and then I'm gonna add the basting stitch to help hold it in place. And then I'll let it go and it'll continue stitching out. So I know we got a little bit of shadow line. So here are the placement stitches. Oop as I practically rubbed that one out. It's just a single, it's just a single stitch. I might change that to a bean stitch. That way it stays in place a little bit better. Or I will change it to a bean stitch for when you guys get the file. Okay, so now we got our big, all this extra. So we don't need all of this over here. We just need to keep where the placement lines are. So you can cut your cutaway up to your design but make sure you're leaving your placement lines because you'll need those and I'm just kind of doing a rough rough cut on it I will go through once it's all done and then trim it a little bit into the little grooves of the wing a little bit better. Okay, 
So I'm gonna go ahead and spray my hook, spray my stabilizer. I am using, it is 505 Temporary Spray. You don't have to use this brand. There are multiple brands out there. I just make sure that it is a temporary spray because if you use something else, it could gum up your needles or cause issues with your machine in general. All right, so we got that down. And before I did the first wing, I did kind of do a little chalk mark for where the center of my jacket was and roughly where I thought that the edges would be. And then because it is going into the arm just a tad bit, I did pull the arm inside out so that way I don't it relieves like the bulk and then the way the, the fabric moves. Yeah, I'm definitely going to change these placement stitches to bean stitches so that way they're a little bit easier to feel. So make sure you got them lined up. Okay. And then you're just going to go ahead and then just smooth out your jacket. If you do happen to go into the sh where the shoulder seam is, just make sure you flip your seam to be whatever all one direction. It doesn't matter which direction it goes as long as it's all going one. You don't want to have it flip flopping back and forth in the middle of your of it because then it could create like bulk and then underneath your needle would could potentially cause issues. So to avoid that. And it all wants to flop the opposite direction I am putting it, of course. But then once you put it back in and you do a, you'll, you will have to add the basting, there we go, basting stitch to the design yourself. It does not come with the basting stitch. Just cause not everybody will be using this for a jacket or something else, but the basting stitches will be in your machine. And then just flip it back up making sure it looks good okay and now let's go ahead and start going around going around the edges I know the design itself is smaller than the hoop so I technically don't need to go put these all the way up against the edge but just to be safe rather be safe than sorry and because I don't want my needle or machine to accidentally run over one of the needles I've done that before Pinning them all the way up along the outer edges of the hoop. And the needles are technically just to kind of help move it from point A to point B once you get it in your hoop or once you get your hoop in your machine and then you add the basting stitch. The basting will help hold your jacket in place for the stitching as well. But the pins will also contribute to helping hold it in place. So you want to make sure you do a good job pinning it, especially depending on the size of the jacket. There could, mine's an extra large or is it a double X? I don't know. I can't see the size anymore. So it's not, it's not a tiny jacket, but it's not a huge jacket, but depending on the size of the jacket, you'll have more material weighing it down on the sides. So you want to make sure to support your jacket while it's being stitched so that way you're not weighing your machine down. keep track of your needles because that's the worst thing you can do is drop it and then you find it later with your foot usually. Or in my case I would hate for one of my dogs to come running in and then they find it with their their paw. I feel like a bad dog mom. Okay. And then make sure when you're pinning your jacket in place or whatever material you're using. You don't want to just pull it and cause tensions. I was going to try to demonstrate, but I was like, no. 
because if you over tension it, then it could, you could get puckering and cause wrinkles. You just want to kind of like nice, have a relaxed feel or look to it. feel the glue still on it. Okay, now that the jacket is all pinned and ready to go, we're going to take this over to the machine. It's going to do the basting stitch and then we're going to continue on doing the wing. We are now over at my machine. I am using my Brother Entrepreneur. It is a 10 needle and this machine came with this tabletop. I can take it in and out, but when I'm doing like bigger projects, or like a heavier vest like I did a Carhartt jacket for my brother-in-law this was really nice to have because then it didn't keep the weight on the hoop arms so I was able to t support the jacket or the technically it was a vest so I was able to support the vest and so I'm using it today for my jacket so it'll help support that if you're doing it in a single needle you have like the tabletop that's around your your machine and the machine arm so just make sure that your jacket or if you're doing some like a vest or Whatever you're doing, if it's something bigger or heavier, make, just make sure that it's supported. So it's going to go ahead and do the basting stitch. The basting stitch is now finished. You might be able to see a little bit of the shine going around here. So that's just going to be able to help reinforce holding the jacket to my hoop while it's stitching and moving around a lot. I do suggest while the jacket, if you're doing a jacket or if you're doing something that has lots of like material that hangs over the sides, that's a project you're gonna wanna babysit. Just because as this is moving around and, sh and things shift, you don't want like the, the collar, I don't know if you can, the collar all up and up here, it might shift down and you, that's the worst feeling ever is th something shifted and then you stitched it down and then you have to go and un unpick it. That's hard to do and so I have ruined many projects by by not babysitting them so that's just a suggestion you don't have to if you don't want to but we're gonna go ahead and get started it's gonna do the wing shading and then it'll go on and doing these column or satin stitching around the sides say babysit your projects. I took a phone call real quick, walked out of the room. Yep, so now I get to start unpicking that. Yay me! So if you do have to unpick, do not remove it from your hoop. Don't change anything. If you can help it, just kind of cut along. These, use a tweezers, use an exacto knife. Just make sure you're really careful. You, do, you don't Put a hole into your jacket that way that way you can kind of backtrack your stitching onto your on your machine and then restart it so that way you can continue on but just yeah just be careful unpicking yay so this is the jacket after i was able to remove for stitching it it definitely pulled it quite a few quite a bit over so I'll have to now be more mindful of taking phone calls I'll just make sure to stop my machine before I do <laughs> but if little tidbits I just used my snips and so I just on the col satin column I just went and picked at it and then make sure doing that one-handed that you flip it over and then you're also picking stuff out of the back that will help and so then because all that was loose then I was able to just kind of like run do one of these and then 
just lightly over the stitches and it pulled a lot of the stitches out so then I could remove those. The back is a little bit more forgiving so if you snip your stabilizer it's not as oh my gosh I totally messed up kind of thing whereas the front it's like oh my gosh no but yeah was able to get it out and now I'm gonna backtrack to not to quite to there I'm gonna go past that so it'll re go over this area just a little bit just to help tack down that edge for it Now that your project's finished, go ahead and remove it from your hoop and take away the stabilizer off the back. Don't cut right up against the, the stitching. You want to leave a little bit of space in between. And it should, when it's all done, the back look like that. And then here's the front. And then we're going to move so on to the sleeve. We're going to continue on with the jacket embroidery tutorial. I already did the back, so this is the wings. So those were... That was the first part of the video and how to show how to reposition it. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to be doing the side sleeve. I've had this jacket for a few years. This has been sitting with an open seam uh, for probably at least two and a half years. It's been sitting in the closet. I almost got rid of it at one point and I'm glad I didn't. But I did so on the inside so wherever this where it comes together and you have like little serge lines just kind of cut it open for however big your design is or whatever you're wanting to do for it. And then make sure you have it on. I'm gonna grab my chalk pen. So you wanna make sure it's on. And then if you can help it, I'm gonna grab a clip. Because if it's not clipped together, then it, it, it changes where the position would be. This would be definitely a lot easier if I had a third hand <laughs> or wasn't wearing long sleeves. Okay, well, maybe I should have clipped it together beforehand, but I probably would have snapped them all off. Yay! Okay, I got one. I'll, I'll live with one. So you want to make sure it's sitting how you normally would be for you on your arm. And so I want mine... So I'm using just a little chalk pin, just to kind of give me the general area or line but I really don't want to go much higher than that okay well, I got some lines take it off. Oh, there we go. I don't need that clip anymore. All that work for just a clip for 30 seconds. Oh, hello puppy. You want to come say hi? Oh, there's a little willow and a little girl. Say hi. <laughs> She's one of my youngest corgis. Her and her sister are about to turn a year old in a week from Sunday. So on the 18th, they'll be a year old. Yes. And you're so snuggly. Oh, no kisses today. Maybe kisses later. Okay? Right. Go play. There you go. Boop. Oh, she's still under coming underneath my table and wants to be up with me. My kids are snugglers, like hardcore snugglers. And then I will have to wash my jacket a bazillion times since it's black and corgi glitter everywhere. Okie dokie. 
So my design that I'm doing for this probably would have helped if you could actually see what I was doing. <laughs> So I just cut open my jacket just a little bit more. I know it's hard to see because it's black on black, but I opened it up, it was over here, so. And not really much, how much more room I can go up, so I'll just have to kind of like turn it inside out-ish kind of to be able to get it up as high as I want, have it going. So grab your hoop. And you can use cutaway, uh, no-show mesh. I wouldn't recommend a tearaway because you want to be able to leave because it is fabric. It's going to get worn. It's going to get washed. It's going to move around a lot. You want something that's going to be a little bit sturdier. Yes, tearaway, the stabilizer stays in there. But I like the cutaway because it just it's a little bit thicker and it helps just support your stitching just a little bit more. And by no means am I a professional or... I definitely do not know everything when it comes to stabilizer. There are plenty of people that know a heck of a lot more than I do. This is just something that I've learned by doing. So. <laughs> so you're gonna mark out, you wanna keep it with where, you, where your start is. Kind of in the middle of your hoop to one side making it sure it's within the actual hoop parameters there are little notches on your hoops that actually if you start on the other side of it, it you won't be able to go that far over so just make sure you're within that line and then I'm gonna go ahead and grab some spray I'm using a 505 it's a temporary spray there's lots of brands out there so just make sure it's a temporary spray. And I'm just spraying where my sleeve will be going. Nice thing about the temporary spray, you can pick it up and lay it back down. And then just smooth out your fabric. You don't want to pull it and like cause it to have like tension on it. You just want to have it nice and smooth. And then once you get it smoothed out and you like where it's at, go ahead and pin it in place. And then because this design is has the potential to be used on other things, I did not include a basting stitch in this design. Your machine will have that option. So then make sure after you, before you start doing your stitching, add the basting stitch. It will help hold your fabric in place so then things aren't shifting around. And then because I'm starting it kind of higher at the top, you kind of have to kind of play with the fabric and move it around. This is one you will definitely have to babysit just because fabric will be leaning over other fabric. And it also depends on how high up you start. If you don't start this high, you may not have as much fabric hanging over than if you versus if you started lower in the jacket arm. Just make sure even as you're pinning, you're not pulling and stretching your fabric out. <clears throat> as you can hear the little growls and grumbles, those are the my littles. I call them my littles because they are they're the youngest and they're the littlest ones. So those are the littles roughhousing and playing. Those two get down with their <laughs> with their play. It's like WWE Smackdown. Okay. So now that 
that's pinned in place, I'm gonna go ahead. If you have, if your machine is capable, if it has a camera, like my brother, Entrepreneur 10 Needle, that one has a camera, where my six needle one has like a laser light or a little red light dot thing. And then my single needle has a camera, built in camera for it. If you have a camera, you can scan it and then that way you can line up where exactly where you want your placement to be. If your machine does not have a camera built into it and just has the light, then use the light and then it usually has like a little grid system to see where it's in the middle at the, at the far left side or right side, depending on which side your, your arm you're doing and where it starts, where it will start and then ha have it follow the middle to the edge to make sure that way it's not leaning one side other than like where your line is going. And just make sure that it's like lined up where you want it to be and then you can adjust the placement of it based off of that. And then if you don't have any of those, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna take this over to the machine. I'm gonna get, it, I'm gonna do my placement on it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use the camera, and then I will do the basting stitch, and then we'll get going. I have the basting stitch done. It's gonna be really hard to tell because it is black on black. I cannot stress this enough. Babysit this jacket or project that you're doing if you're doing it on a long sleeve. Just make sure that you are here because even as I was doing the the basting stitch I'm having to pull parts up out of the way and you you don't want to have a repeat of what I did on the back of the jacket so I just hope that you will continue to watch it I know I'm gonna be sitting here watching it like crazy so we're gonna get going and doing the design is now finished for the arm and now we get to take up all of the pins accidentally cutting the jacket or whatever material you're using and you don't have to snip everyone you could definitely skip like four or five there spaced out enough take it out of the hoop prior. Cut off the big pieces first. Another project. Since this is going against the arm, using a instead of using a cutaway, doing like a no-show mesh might have been a little bit better of an option. Now that I 
Now that I think about it, just because it is going to potentially be up against your skin unless you're wearing like a long sleeve shirt. But because it has the potential to go up against my skin, I'm going to be, I will add a, there's multiple brands of for this stuff. The stuff that I have is just kind of, is called Dream Weave. It is material or stuff that you can iron over the top of your embroidery and your stabilizer and everything. And it just leaves a nice soft finish to it. So that way you're not feeling the scratchiness of the stabilizer or the backs of the threads or anything like that. It's the same stuff like if you're gonna do like a onesie, you'd put it on the onesie so then it's not gonna scratch up the baby or the young kid, their skin or anything. want to cut right up against your stitching you do want to leave just a little bit of the material there and then just careful as you're going around that you're not accidentally cutting your fabric so when you like you see me reach my hand underneath I'm sticking my finger into like the curves ahead of time to kind of like separate the stabilizer from my jacket so that way when I come in with the scissors I can't I'm not accidentally cutting my jacket So that's what the back of the design looks like. I'm going to turn my iron on so that way I can get the dream weave going. And I just have it on the cotton setting. And so here is the front. I'm all twisted here. I know for you it's backwards. It says wingspan. <laughs> Like, if you know, you know. <laughs> and then go through their one or two little jump stitches. Some of them are kind of hidden within the stitches, so you could probably just leave them. And then there's like this one up here that's a little more obvious. And then, oh, there it is. I'm like, I have a lighter around here. And then I'm just going to do a little lighter. Action. Help singe the ends of the embroidery thread so that way they hopefully don't become loose. So, yeah, and this was the back of the jacket, so I'm really excited about it. I'm very much looking forward to it. And then I think for the front, instead of saying Valaris, I think I'm just going to do the night court symbol for it. And then I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna go ahead and grab the dream weave stuff and then we're, I'm gonna get that cut up and then we'll apply that. This is the dream weave stuff. I just have it on a really big roll. So it's got a little bit of a stretch to it. So it's not, well, it's not super stretchy, but it will help, it'll stretch with the material of the fabric that you're gonna iron it on too. Nope, not, that's not that direction. It's not big enough, wide enough. Nope, okay, we're gonna have to do it this way. And then it's on the inside of the sleeve, so you're really not gonna see it. So if it's not the prettiest cut or whatever, it's not gonna be a big deal. Or if you did it on like a t-shirt 
or something like that where you can potentially see it more. You don't want to necessarily have like a ton of excess around it if you can help it. I'm just going to feel through my jacket and feel through the stabilizer to feel where the design is. Definitely not the prettiest cutting I've ever done, but it'll work. And then once we get over to that, the start or the top part will be a little bit trickier, but the bottom part will be easier to maneuver. So just kind of get it laid out just a little bit and then I'm going to move it over to my iron and then I will iron that down. When you iron this down, make sure you're not just moving it back and forth, you're actually picking up your iron and you are pressing it. You don't want to accidentally overstretch the, for lack of a better term, I'm just going to call it dream weave. So you don't want to overstretch the dream weave, you don't want to stretch out your shirt either. So you're just giving it nice presses. Your biggest thing with using the Dreamweave or whatever brand you get, you want to really make sure that you get the edges down really well because if you don't iron them down all the way, they'll start to roll after washing and wearing. And so if you just see that, then just turn your article of clothing or item inside out and then just try to roll it back down and iron it or if it's, it's not sticky enough or you can't get it to iron flat anymore. And just cut it cut it back and then repress it. Okay, so now that's all nice and smooth, so now when I wear it. I'm not going to be feeling the roughness of the stabilizer or the backs of the thread. I'll just feel this, but feel nice and smooth. Not quite as nice as my jacket, but not that it's the nicest jacket. But it'll feel better than it would if I didn't have this. <laughs> so all the, the dream weave is now on the inside of the sleeve, as you can see here. I don't know if they make black or different colors of this type of stuff, but if they did, that'd be very nice. <laughs> But here is the sleeve. So if I hold up the front of the jacket, and there it is. Looks good. I'm excited about it. So now to be able to finish this, which I won't be, I won't be filming that part. I'll just be showing you the after. If you have a serger, make sure you're using black thread or whatever whatever matching thread that you need for the inside of your jacket. And then just clip along, keeping the sides together. And then if you don't have a serger, you can use a stretch stitch or zigzag, a little lightning stitch. 
and then just go along the edges to get it back together. But for sergers, just kind of start above where you where you stop or where you opened it, and kind of like that's where the end of it, where the old surge is. Tie it off, or you'll finish tying it off after you're all done. And then just surge down to the other end. And then when you get to the other end, run a tail, and then yeah, just tie off both ends, and then your arms back together. And that's it. And then I will show you mine when it's all done.